park, and if you can hear the music behind me, this stuff goes on all day long. This is the greatest place to be at this time of year. This is the 97th Indian Market, and it's where the greatest Native Americans all come the third week in Santa Fe, and I've been coming for decades. So if you have a bucket list, I want you to put this one on it, because if you have it, you're not going to believe what you'll see. So you have every kind of art you can imagine, from jewelry, sculptures, paintings, to pottery, fine art, to more arts and crafts, but it's all quality and it's all Native made. So Native Americans, if you want to see the greatest in artwork, you come to Indian Mark in Santa Fe, third week in August. You're going to have a blast, and you're going to see me there too, I guarantee you. But I'll be walking around trying to find some new art. Jeff Marlow Cretoni, he's at Indian Market. He only has one textile today. Maybe you want to show it too. And the reason is, is he's in such great demand, museums are buying his work, he can only produce what he can produce, and it takes a long time. What, is that, what did that take you to how long? Um, you know, this, this rug had uh, an exceptional amount of detail around the border, and then yeah. I added um, a pictorial in, in the center, and I was using um, Mo, uh, two, two threads in order to blend the colors within the piece. Oh, yeah, very cool. So sometimes that can be a little bit tedious to work into, oh, yeah, into the rug. Especially in here. But it works when you're um, when you're trying to blend color. You don't just get a flat area of space. Um, so it gives it some dimension when you're weaving. And then with the outside border, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to add more detail. Um, yeah, I like how you did with the, the, with the half head. of the Valera star up above. Yeah, and I wanted to bring some of that color out from the center out. Um, and then with some of the patterns on the bottom, I was using some older patterns that I had seen in rugs. Older rugs. And you're weaving here, or you're doing something. You're yeah, I'm working on a smaller piece. Um, because I didn't have too much to bring, I only had the one rug to bring this year. I wanted to kind of demonstrate for some of my customers of what I'm doing. Oh yeah. Um, unfortunately, I forgot the lace of them, otherwise this would be attached to the edge of the oh, table. Yeah. But I have somebody going to pick that up for me now, so should be all set up by this afternoon. And so is this going to be a, this looks like it's going to be a kind of a small runner kind of a thing? Or um, well, it's going to be a satchel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weave a design into the bottom half. Yes. And then I'm going to weave um, another, a different design in the top half. So it's going to look like a sampler as I'm weaving it. Oh, yeah. But when I'm done, it's going to be folded over. And then I'm going to use this edging cord here to sew up the sides. Yes. And then I'm going to uh, braid a five cord braided strap over the top. Oh, so it's going to be like a cool little purse kind of a thing? Kind of a little, a little purse. I started this design um, a couple of years ago as a cell phone holder because, you know, a uh -huh. lot of times people are... That's, that's what it'll still be. Yeah, it'll probably still be a cell phone that's, holder. It's a little bit wider yeah. um, than my other pieces, but um, I tried. I wanted to work a little bit wider so people can get an idea of yeah. how, how design works with uh, when you're weaving, uh, especially with... Um, because most most of the time you work in double work, so you yeah, can get the, the block the block design. Oh, very interesting. And so, how long will it take you to weave something like that? It just all depends. Um, sometimes, when if I'm working with um, just a basic geometric pattern, it may take me a day and a half, two days to three days. But if I'm doing pictorial in the piece, it'll take me much longer. Oh yeah, very like, cool. Up to a week. So. Can they or somebody order this in, in Indian market? Would you do it? Yes, or? absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, last year, I had I did a portrait of my cat Mitzi. Um, one of my multi, uh, he's a customer that I wrote for several times. Um, he came up and he was looking for a gift for his sister yeah. for her birthday, and right away he said, "I'll take it." My sister <laughs> loves cats. And so, how can people find you, Marla? Um, they can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page uh, under Marla Katoni Navajo Textiles. Okay. On Facebook. Um, and, and that's Katoni with a K. Yes, and they can also email me um, at C H A I. My last name Katoni K A T O N E Y at hotmail.com. And also, they can text me or they can call me on my cell phone. Which don't is... give them a cell phone. Okay. <laughs> no cell phone. We don't want to have cell phone. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> you can give me the cell phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, email. And yes. you can also uh, contact uh, Mark Sublet, who also has my 
my telephone number and my email. There you go. <laughs> I just don't want you to get inundated oh, because yeah. of the number of people that might watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Every, then you'll have to change your cell phone number. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, right. Marlo Catoni, he's a great weaver. He's saying some of the most unique and interesting things, I think, right now by any Danae artist. And you need to check it out. Well, you can still get it before all the museums suck them all up. So, Mar <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, okay, Marlo, all right. I'll let you keep weaving. Thanks for taking the time. I know okay. it's busy. And come see us when you're in Tucson. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, Marlo Catoni. I have Jennifer Collin. Collin. Collin, yeah. yes, from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> she has Four Winds Gallery in Australia. I do. So you come all the way to Santa Fe, New Mexico yeah. to do what and why? Okay. I have a gallery and have had a gallery in Sydney since 1981, and I specialize in North American Indian art and jewelry, in particular jewelry. It's, I love the historic work and right. mainly. Um, turquoise is my birthstone. My family lived in America because Dad was with Westinghouse, and I wanted to buy some turquoise jewelry. This was back in 1979, 1980, mm -hmm. and we were here for a while. Found, you know, turquoise, got introduced to it, fell in love with it, and came back to Sydney and didn't finish my maths and science degree to yeah. become an optometrist. I opened up a tiny gallery in Double Bay in Sydney dealing in American Indian art and jewelry, and that's what I've been doing for 39 years. So I come over here years. twice a year, February now and August, of course, for Indian markets, for the old shows, and to find great pieces of wearable sculpture that are made, you know, with beautiful materials. They're all one off. And we don't have turquoise in Australia, so my clients like me like mm -hmm. to dress themselves in beautiful, collectible, investment quality art that's um, coloured, has good shape and size. My original interest was early now. I have to move. Okay. So yeah, so it's been um, a journey of passion for me, I suppose. But at the end of the day, you know, I have a nice gallery in Double Bay, I have a home in Sydney, I have a beach house, three daughters that I've educated and so on. And the work of the North American Indian has looked after me all my life and I've awarded my lifestyle through what I do. But I also find a great connection with the people and their artwork. Um, I find there's a beauty in it. People say to me often at home, why don't you carry Aboriginal artwork from Australia? Right. I said, well, I don't know. I didn't fall in love with it. So, <laughs> and I fell in love with it, of course, and that's what it is. So this is what Indian market's like. There's a huge group of people yeah. going and coming. You f Jennifer, I just found on the street, I saw her early in the show. She loves oh, yeah. early bracelets, early jewelry, and now you're shopping for... Contemporary, contemporary jewelry there. in old style, yes. mainly. Um, I don't buy work that's really modern, and you know, even though it can be beautifully executed in diamond and gold and whatever by mm -hmm. great North American Indian artist, it is then starting to look more like contemporary jewellery in made in Australia by great Australian jewellers yes. and Scandinavian jewellers. So that's, and also it's, I guess it's never been my particular area of attraction. So I keep with the traditional work, um, always have done. Turquoise is my absolute yes. thing, and I guess my... We wouldn't have guessed. We are, my preference <laughs> is um, probably the, I was going to say the earlier Navajo style influence designs, but as you know, learning about the Zuni work over the years, I've grown to really love significant mm. Zuni work too. You know, Likia, and, um, Leo Poblano, and all the incredible inlay work that's done by the Zuni, Zuni artisans as well. But yeah, it's been, and I love coming every year. I love seeing all the yeah. artists, I love finding great pieces of jewellery. I always make new contacts, new connections, right. new communications with people. But yeah, it's, it's a life's journey, and I think I'll do this so, forever. Forever. So if you want to see Jennifer, you have two options. You come and meet her on the street somewhere <laughs> and Indian market or when you're in Australia in Sydney, right? That's yeah, where that's true. You go see her or on her in website. Double Bay. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Double Bay. In Double so Bay. it's Four Winds Gallery. Four Will Sydney, Gallery. Double Bay. Yeah. Thank you for Thank taking you. it. So I'm with AJ and you have to say your last name Nick. Nikwetua. Nikwetua. So you kind of come from important heritage too. Yeah, definitely. That's Tell us. So I am the granddaughter of Verma Nikwetua. She is the niece of Charles Lolama, and they are both renowned jewelers, Hopi. Both of them were all from uh, Hopela, Third Mesa. And she has really been a. Uh, <laughs> Someone who's very groundbreaking in the jewelry community, and I 
really aspire to uh, make work as beautiful and elegant as hers for one day, but I take a lot of um, her same philosophy in the way she makes her jewelry, um, trying to make it for someone specific, but for me it's a little harder because, you know, I, I take orders, but I also make things um, to sell, just uh, to retail. So I try to make things that I would wear that would feel comfortable and you know, so a lot of the color schemes are the same because these are the colors that I wear. Like this, which I just yes. bought for my daughter. Yes. So I was talking to, to Marlo, I see the great jewelry and I didn't even know about you, now everybody's going to know about you. So thank you for taking the time. You actually have a customer that's wanting to buy too. So how can people find you? Um, I'm mostly on social media, largely on Instagram. All my information is on the back of my card, but my Instagram is just Tvehungnem or AJ Nekwetiwa. And then on Facebook, it's um, Art by AJ Nekwetiwa. Yes, and this is how you spell yes. Nekwetiwa, yeah. if you don't know, because <laughs> the Hopi names are very difficult. Yeah, they are very <laughs> difficult just to AJ. pronounce. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You. My daughter will love it. Come by and see you. us in Tucson. I definitely will. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right, I'm with this guy right here, Josh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is his magazine. He's set up here. Tell us what you're doing, Josh. Uh, we are the official magazine for the third year row of the Santa Fe New hey. Indian Market. This is probably one of the busiest years we've seen. It's only two hours, and this place is packed. So come on down and check it out. Now, how many how many magazines will you give out? Probably about. 20,000. 20,000 magazines yep, yep. over two days? Yeah, over two days. Oh, that's amazing. Yep, yep. And as we stand here, people are just coming by and rotating and grabbing these magazines. It's, and so what's in the magazine? Okay, so this is our August, September issue, but it's also the official magazine for the market. So we did, what we did is a guide. So we kind of broke it down category by category, talked about each one, pottery and jewelry, tried to give people a, 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 an actual guide that they can use to help them kind of navigate the market itself so mm -hmm. names of our who's hot who, who's kind of who are the standard bearers who are some of the award winners over the last year just kind of like ballpark ideas of, of what's happening out there in each category so people who ha couldn't come to this until next year how would they get the magazine uh they can go to our website uh, nativeamericanartmagazine.com uh and uh check it out there you can the entire um uh, content is available online now if you're a subscriber. And so, that if you're a subscriber. Yeah. So if you're a subscriber, you can get all the information. It's a huge, major magazine. I know I use it for reference. I actually write in it occasionally, and I'm pretty sure I'm in it every year. Every year. Yeah. Every issue. As a writer, as a, <laughs> as a gallery owner, a lot of things. So we, we, uh, we love working with you. And this is your booth every year? This is our booth. We're right here. We're right up. I don't know if you can tell, but we're right in the middle, right on the plaza, right in the heart of it all. And it's definitely all happening this year. So we have Joshua Rose. He's the, what, what do you call yourself? Editor, editor, editor chief, yeah, all those bottle stuff, officer, yeah. yeah. And he also <laughs> does, he also does Western Art Collector as well, yeah, yeah. which is an important magazine that we show too. So Joshua Rose, thank you so much. I know you're busy today. No, You've got to give out 20,000. 20,000. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of we, talk. We've been going to events since Wednesday. Oh my God. Couldn't be more fun. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Good luck. Santa Fe. We're at Indian Market, 97. I'm with Charles King. I grabbed him off the street as he's running around. I heard you had a good show. We did. We had an excellent show. Yeah. We had about eight potters, and Jeremy Cryer does baskets, and Kevin Poirier, and um, it's been a fantastic weekend. And it's great to be out here at Market and getting to see all of the amazing artwork. So you run around and try to find any new artists that might be worthy of Charles King Gallery and uh, more than that, Scottsdale I, and Santa Fe? That. Uh, but it's really good to go and see the artists who won and be able to congratulate. Yeah. 
them and family members, you know, people that I've known for 30 years or more. So <laughs> it's like going to see family for a, a oh, couple that's of days. Cool. Yeah, that's what we're doing nice. too. Thank yeah. you, Charles. I know you're trying to go find people. Have Thank fun. you very much, Mark. Charles King, go by his gallery in Santa Fe. Thanks. Here with Russell Sanchez, fantastic Santa Potter. What do we have to say? I mean, this is everything, right? Yeah, it's everything. Yeah, so yeah, tell me what you got. What awards well, you get, Russell? I've got Best of Division, Best of Class, <laughs> and several blues. <laughs> and you got, and on the on the bear itself, it looks like you've done some super fine, is that like scrapito? Uh, it's scrapito wear, scrapito work with uh, hematite in there. Ah, I've never. I don't, no, nobody's but, really yeah, done it yet. I was so say, I've never. Brand new. I've never seen it. Like what? What made you do that? Yeah. Um. Just thought because you're cool. Russell Sanchez. Yeah, because yeah. you thought it'd be cool. And so you did it on both, and they both won. Yeah, they both won. And then you've got your your yeah, Look at that. The colors work just well, so that's why I thought it'd be cool to do. So do you have to you? Put the hematite after you fire and oh yeah, yeah everything's right? got to be after fire. It's yeah. gonna blow up if I don't. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> that could be a pot too for you, right? It could be. <laughs> Try something else. So you want you together. want tons of and you're having a good show, I see. I'm having a great show. All right, it's cool. He's one of, Russell Sanchez, one of the great potters, Santa Defonso. He always wins, but this year he took them all away. Huh. Thanks, Russell. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. And you and you come from a di couple of different tribes. Oh yeah, yeah, if you can see that, it's uh, San Felipe, San Domingo, and uh, Navajo. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, see, I always forget that. We call it Dene. But that's yeah. but that's my last name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the people. The people. <laughs> so yeah. That's so how can people, the people, find you if they want to get your jewelry? Well, I'm online. You can go to uh, timyazi.com, or if you're on Facebook, it's the Native Silver Sun on Facebook, and either uh, Tim, Tim and Rebecca. Yazi. So that's three ways. And then Instagram, of course. And we're just working on it. Cool. Or MedicineMangalley.com. Or Madison Man Gallery. <laughs> they always forget the yeah. data. When I met him, them. I said, hey, my arm hurts. I need a medicine man. <laughs> <laughs> and did I help you? Yeah. yeah. I did? Here I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Stop hurting. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim is really a great silversmith. I think he's uh, he's on the uprise for sure. And you're going to see more of his works. And probably by next year, you may see two, three, four ribbons. I don't know. But you need to watch this silversmith. Tim Yaz is fantastic. Thank and you. I appreciate yeah I you appreciate are that. yeah thank you for uh, coming and doing your thing in yeah. Indian market. Some people think I'm so I'm just too much. <laughs> <laughs> Silversmith. Yeah. Right. I put in for the uh, for the um, the judging, but it didn't make it. So this I call this abundance, and it's just because it's abundant. It has a lot of stuff that's going on here. I've got a corn roll. I've got a very high. A uh, piece of uh, a gem quality um, pilot mountain on here, and it's just everything I've learned in life, so that's what it is. And of course, my bowl. <laughs> you got the talent. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, so we have Robert Albert here, great Katina Carver. Can you get this in the shot? This is unbelievable. Just pan out for two seconds. My guy's gonna hate it, but that's okay. This is what we want to do. We want to smell the kachinas. Yeah, right. Definitely. Wow. So I've been oh, yeah. a, I've been an artist for uh, 29 years. Just 29. Just 29 years. I knew you when you were just a little I, boy. Then I guess. Uh, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Basically. So I've been doing the shows uh, uh, here in uh, Santa Fe, and then also in Phoenix at the Herd Museum. I, I started my career out in Tucson with the galleries down there and uh, I've won a lot of recognition for my artwork and I'm known for these contemporary uh, kashari or clown pieces yes. and I'm, I'm known for also for doing multi-figure pieces. So the big piece that you saw here, that's all one piece carving. Wow. It took me over a year to make that. Wow. So even all the littlest details, right? Even the feather, the thing is right, right. all one piece? That's all one piece. Wow. Yes. And so a lot of people that come to the market, they don't believe me. So I, I document my pieces now and kind of show them the transition from beginning to end. And do you do that on just photographs or you video it or both? Oh uh, No, I just do photographs. Yeah, now you're going to have yeah. to do the video. I guess I have to. Now, yeah. <laughs> so what happens if you, you know, break something that... Well, being, do you, what do you do then? Being, you know, 
carvers will all say that these are all one piece, but there are times when they get broken. Right. So wood is very forgiving, you just glue it back together. Yeah, you know? yeah that's right. And uh, for a long time, when I first began uh, my career as an artist, I had a lot of side work uh, fixing broken dolls. Uh -huh. And so the hardest part about that is matching the different paints that they use, because some will use stains, some will use acrylics, some will use oils, right. uh, temper paints, you know, so it's a hard, the hardest part is just matching the paint and, and so, the feathers. So if you sell something like this, can you actually ship it? Or do you have to yes. take it? You can. Yes. Uh, for a piece like this, um, uh, I've learned through the gallery owners how to ship the pieces. Uh, I double box them, of course. And then what I do is uh, use um, a Velcro mm -hmm. to tape them to a separate piece of cardboard. Then I slide that down into the box and then put the popcorns on top. I've never had a piece break. Yeah. Uh, ever. And I so ship you, them all over the country. So you actually put Velcro around the, the base. base. Yes. I see. So that holds it in place. That keeps it from moving around. Moving around. around right. That's the problem. That's the problem. And so do so you, the people that deliver them, you know how delivery people are. They right. just throw stuff yes. in the truck. <laughs> uh, do you name each piece? Is it, yes. I mean a year of your life. Right? Yeah. Each piece is unique and each piece has a title. Uh, even though I do the Kashari clowns and I have collectors that buy from me year after year, each one is unique and each one has a title. I don't replicate the ideas. And so what, what's the title of this? This one piece? is called Snooze You Lose. And so <laughs> the did. idea was the clown here is the hunter Yes. and he was out, out all morning long stalking the deer. Uh -huh. So he took some time out for lunch so he has his peaky bread in his hand yeah. and his watermelon yeah. and as he was eating he fell asleep. And so the, stock, the deer that he had been stalking all morning came and stole his quiver of arrows yeah. and stole some of his lunch. <laughs> so Snooze You Lose is the title of the piece. Snooze You Lose. lose. Yeah, that's the back. Wow, that's amazing. That's entirely all one piece. And that's a juniper? No, it's a root. This, this. Yeah, the, yeah, that's a the image that I'm trying yeah. to make. Yeah, this so is I, all I, always, I always tell people that that's glued on. And so one thing I'll say is, no, it's not. So look at oh, yeah, look at that. So I grab it and see how strong wow. it is. That's, that's, that's all one piece of wood. I love that. That's snooze thank you, you lose. thank you. That won second place at last year's uh, Santa Fe Market. Wow. So if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Uh, they can contact me. Uh, my phone number. Do you have that phone number on? Do you have an email? You I, have an, I have an email. Yeah, an email. Three uh, grandfathers. Dot com. Three grandfathers. Right. Number three. No. Uh, yes, three, but spelled out. Three. Three grandfather. Dot com spelled out. Right. If you want to get a hold, and you and you have to call ahead because I can tell you. It takes a year to do yes. one sculpture. You might have to even get on a list, possibly. Yes, I actually have uh, a year list. Uh, I have several clients that are waiting for carvings. Uh, the carving that I'm working on now, the person's been waiting for two years. Two years. Yeah. So get on it now. And maybe you can get something like this. But I imagine you do small ones, too, right? Yes, uh, the piece there that's on the other side, that's a standard small piece for me. Yes. That's a single figure. And each time, like I said, it's always a different subject matter. But each one has its own title. But the smaller pieces are a standard um, sale price. Yeah. So that's uh, $3,500 yes. for that piece there. The show pieces yep. I do can go into the thousands. Yeah, well, I think multi-thousands. Yes. I mean, yes. I mean, a year's work. Yeah, this piece here <laughs> actually is 23000 Yeah, which to me seems pretty reasonable, actually, for a year's work. Yeah, but I was figuring it out, and I probably don't even make minimum wage. You know? so, <laughs> but you love what you do. Exactly. And you've been carving for 30 years? Yeah, 29 years on the stand. Yeah. All right, very cool. We have Robert Albert here. He's a great Kachina carver, one of the best. You've won lots of awards. Yes. Thank you for taking Thank your you, time. Thank you, Mr. Sibbett. I appreciate it. I know it's super busy for you. It's good to see it's you again. Smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, fantastic. Thank you, we'll, sir. We'll see you on the internet. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I have Melvin Platero here. He's a fifth generation Diné Navajo silversmith. Melvin, you blew my mind today when you said this was the first year that you've been silversmith. That's right, yeah. Um, I've been making jewelry since uh, the end of last August, so just under a year. And so your aunt was the one who taught you? Uh, my grandparents. Your grandparents. Uh, yeah, I grew up with my grandparents and uh, they did this as a way of living and um, I just picked it up from there and 
last year I decided it was time for me to carry it on, so I picked it up and started doing it. Yeah, because you have another job, right? That's right, yeah, I work full time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We won't say because we don't know if we want your boss to see, but yeah. <laughs> would you like to do this full time at some point, maybe? Um, later down the road, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would really enjoy it. I love it. It's something I just have a passion about. It. It's well, one fun. of the things that's amazing about his work, and I'm telling you, this is really a rare thing for me to say, but. This is extremely well-crafted artisans right here. And we're talking one year. So he's done it in just one year. And now you can see what he's doing. It's unbelievable. As you can see here in Indian market, it's busy, it's noisy, it's crazy. But if you want to see somebody who I think could be really uh, an up and coming star in this is Melvin. So Melvin, we'll wait until this ambulance go by. So here we go, we got security. This is real life shooting, as you can see. <laughs> if you come to Indian Market, you have, you have a little bit of this, whether you're filming or not. <laughs> There we go. So, if they want to get a hold of you, Melvin, how can people find you? Um, well, I do have an Instagram um, account, MP Fifth Gen Jeweler, or you can find me under my name, Melvin Platero. Um, I don't have a website yet. Maybe later down the line that you know, that'll come up. And one of the things that's great about when you find somebody who's just began and actually has real talent is it's affordable at this point. So <laughs> this is one of the reasons I come around through Indian Market. I want to see who's doing what. What, what new silversmiths, what new potters, and I found one right here. So Melvin Platero, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, very good. Appreciate it. We'll see you later. All right, Thanks. thank Sell you. Up. All right. <laughs> so I'm in Santa Fe. I've been coming to Santa Fe forever. Like, the, I've been coming to these shows for almost 30 years, and I grew up in New Mexico. Uh -huh. And every year I go and look for what I call Mr. and Mrs. Santa Fe. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. Santa Fe. So tell me. I mean, you guys are fantastic. Later, okay? Do you do do you dress like this normally or just Indian market? And go ahead, let me let me hear. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle, you can start. I off. try to dress like this. Uh huh. Not every day, but when I go out, I try to dress. Yeah, you. Would, yeah, I like it. And yes. it's on, And so, and what about yourself? Are you guys a pair? No. Nope. Any, we are. <laughs> okay, here's the pair. Here's the pair. And yes, we're best I got friends. It. And we're best friends. Yep. So, and do you live in Santa Fe? No. Or do you visit? Where are Just, you guys from? I'm originally from New Mexico. Oh, good for you. But uh, living in Palm Springs, California yes. now. Yeah. And originally from Louisiana. Uh-huh. And this is our 21st anniversary oh. of coming to market. Uh-huh. That's fantastic. And I was born in Santa Fe. I'm from Santa Clara, Pueblo, which oh, is yeah. near Espanola. Oh, yeah. And I was raised in this culture, so oh, it's just good. part of me. Do you make Pueblo pottery at all? I used to, but yeah. I, do, I no longer do. All right, yeah, because yeah, I deal in all that kind of stuff. Oh. I probably know a few of your relatives. I'm, I'm sure you do. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you guys are just fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And there's no way that I could pass up Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. Santa Fe <laughs> <laughs> for this. Thank you. You're very kind. Yeah, Thank no. you. But, a Thank title you. is always good to have. <laughs> <laughs> Indian you. Market. This is what you're going to see in Indian Market. You never know what you're going to see. And when you have this kind of great coral, turquoise, turquoise, I mean. And, oh, pan in on the feet. Moccasins as well. <laughs> All right, Indian Market, 2019. Thanks, guys. We need your support for the Medicine Man Gallery channel, so make sure to click the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video, which we do every morning on Wednesday and Friday. See you soon.